There are three basic circuit types. We have series circuits, where there's only one path, and in a series circuit, the current will remain the same throughout that whole path once the current value is determined by the voltage in the circuit and the resistance values of the circuit. So it's not that all series circuits have the same current, but once we determine what that value is, that value will remain the same because there's only one path. We also have parallel circuits where there's a separate path for each load. And the advantage of this is each resistor or each load will have source voltage available to it. Instead of sharing the voltage like in series, the full source voltage is available to each leg or each branch of the circuit. The third type of circuit is a combination of the two. And on the bottom here, I have two different ones drawn slightly different. In the first example, it's a series parallel circuit where the series resistor is first and then the parallel part of the circuit comes next. In the bottom right, I have the parallel part first and then there's a resistor in series with that parallel part as shown in this picture. And regardless of whether the series part is first or the parallel part is first, this type of a circuit arrangement is called a series parallel circuit. And we could even have inside the parallel path, instead of having just one resistor in that parallel branch, we could have two resistors in series in the parallel branch, and it would still be called a series parallel circuit. And we'll see more on those combinations later on. When we apply Ohm's law to series circuits, we need to use series circuit rules. And in a series circuit, like I've already explained, current remains constant throughout the circuit. The second rule is that the total circuit resistance is going to be the sum of all the resistance in the circuit. So if I had two resistors like I show here, whatever the values are of those resistors, they would be added together to find the total resistance. Rule number three is saying the sum of all voltage drops is equal to the source voltage. Now we've learned in the series circuit course that the resistors are sharing the voltage or the source voltage. So if the source voltage was 12 volts, the two resistors would share the voltage. And rule number three is just saying that if we added up the two voltages that were used by those two loads or the two resistors, it would equal the source voltage. And the fourth rule is just a little variation of rule three, where it's defining that if the two values of the two resistors are different, then the value of the voltage drops for each of those resistors would be different. So if one is a higher resistance, the higher resistance load, for example, if it was eight ohms for the first resistor and four ohms for the second resistor, the first resistor would get more of the voltage because it has more resistance and the second resistor would get less of the voltage proportionally because it's a smaller value. And for more detail on series circuit rules and series circuits, see the series circuit course where it is explained in more detail. When we're working with a parallel circuit, we need parallel circuit rules. And the four parallel circuit rules, we have source voltage is applied to all legs in the circuit, and that just means that each resistor or each load has the full source voltage available to it. Rule number two for parallel is that the total current is the sum of the current flowing in each leg or each branch. So that means that the current flowing through resistor number one and the current flowing through resistor number two, if we added those together, that would equal the total current. Rule number three is stating that the current flowing through each leg depends on the amount of resistance in each leg. And this just means that if the first resistor is a different value than the second resistor, then the current flowing in each of those branches would be different. If the two resistors were the same value, then the current flowing in each of those branches would be the same, and they would still add up to form the total current. And rule number four states that the total resistance is always lower than the resistance of the lowest leg. Briefly, this just means that if we were calculating the total resistance of a parallel circuit, in this example where there's two resistors, the total resistance would always be lower 
than the value of the lowest resistor. So if one resistor was 6 ohms and one resistor was 4 ohms, the total resistance would be lower than 4 ohms if we were making the calculations. And the parallel circuit course goes into this in much more detail and gives many examples so that you can understand how to make those calculations. In this course, we're going to be dealing with series parallel circuits. In order to do that, we're going to need to use the series circuit rules and the parallel circuit rules. When we're working on a series part of the circuit, the series rules will apply. When we're working on a parallel part of the circuit, the parallel rules will apply. And while it may seem a little tricky to figure out right now when you're first looking at a series parallel circuit, as we move through the course, you'll find that it will become easier and easier after a little practice.